Today's workout is a five minute total abs workout. So we're gonna work the upper, lower, six pack, obliques. We're gonna do it all. Let's start on our backs. Knees come over your hips, draw your belly button in toward your spine, press your lower back toward the floor. We're gonna press those legs out to 45 and then do a single leg press. So knee comes in and then back out. As we're moving those legs, we wanna press down, lower back goes toward the floor and that's gonna keep our abs engaged. We wanna stop that knee directly over the hip because that's where that pressure is. And then pushing the leg back out to 45. If that's too intense, you can take the legs a little higher and that will take out some of that pressure. And again, if you feel that lower back leaving the ground, just come higher with the legs or take a break. We're working for 50 seconds and we're resting for 10, so there's plenty of time to take a break in the middle of the set if you need to. But it's an intense five minutes. All right, break for a second. You can just hug your knees into your chest. This time we're gonna do a double leg press. So that same thing we did, both legs, same time. Here we go, so knees over hips, press those legs out, bring them in. So this is a little more intense than that first one because we're doing both legs at the same time. Again, especially as you push those legs out, I want you to press that lower back toward the floor. Pull that belly button in toward your spine to maintain that strong abdominal brace. And again, if you need to, if you're feeling it in your low back, just take those legs a little higher or just for a quick break and then get back into it. Again, stopping those knees directly over the hips to keep that pressure in the lower abs. That's what we're targeting here. Almost there. Rest. All right, we're gonna move on to a straight leg reverse crunch. So we're gonna start with those feet down. Keep that belly pulled in. We're gonna reverse crunch, lift the knees, drive those legs up and come back down. So knees in, legs up, slowly tap the feet back on the floor. So you can see I'm bringing my knees in and then I'm shooting them up. And as I'm shooting those legs up, I'm lifting my tailbone using those lower abs. And then I'm just controlling, coming back through that same move and lightly touching the floor on the bottom. So we're not collapsing on this one. We're keeping that control, especially as we lower the legs. So we keep that abdominal pressure on. So this move works for us the whole time. And again, we wanna shoot the knees up over the hips and then lift. We're not pulling the knees to the chest. Again, that's gonna keep that pressure on in the low abs. This one might look kinda ugly if you're doing it at home, but don't sweat it, it doesn't have to be pretty. Rest. All right, we're gonna move on to a straight leg scissor twist. This time we're gonna start to lift our upper body. So fingers to temples, legs up. We're gonna do a scissor, drop the back leg, twist to the front, and then switch. So now we're starting to get into the upper abs and the obliques. So we're just dropping the legs. You don't have to touch the floor here, but I do want you to maintain the ab brace, try to lift your shoulder blades and then rotate your chest to the outside thigh. Now a good option here is to bend the knees. If you need to take a little bit of that pressure off, but if you can, Try to straighten those legs and then twist. Going almost to the floor. Rest. All right, we're moving on to a forearm plank with a knee tap. So come on over, elbows under shoulders, fists together, legs together. We're gonna tap those knees lightly on the floor, lift. So we're just dropping both knees at the same time. You can also start from your knees and just do the reverse of this. That will work just fine. And anyway, we wanna squeeze our glutes, pull the belly button in toward the spine. And you can see as I'm moving, my hips are staying in line with my shoulders. So I'm just moving those legs, just lightly grazing the floor here. So all that pressure stays in the abs.
Almost there. And time. All right, we're gonna move to a commando. So we're gonna start on our forearms, walk up to a plank. So take your feet wide, walk up with the right hand, left hand, walk back down, switch hands. So we go left, right, come back down, switch again. Taking your feet wide will help you balance in this one. And we wanna to try to put the hand where the forearm just was. So we stay balanced, protect those shoulders. So your shoulders at the top should be right over your wrists. Hips stay square to the floor. Try to prevent rocking and that will also help if you've got your feet wide here. Now, if you're on your knees, you'll do the same thing. Just keep your knees wide. Try to avoid shifting your weight excessively. We're almost finished with this one. It's tough, but we're really getting the full body going here. Rest. All right, we're moving back to that forearm plank. This time, we're just gonna hold it for the 50 second interval. So knees or toes, come on up if you're on your toes. I want you to breathe. Zip your legs together. Remember your butt is at shoulder height. Your shoulders are away from your ears. Your chin is tucked. Pulling your belly button in toward your spine to engage your core. Got it flat back here. You might be shaking, that's okay, but we're not rocking. We're keeping everything square to the floor. We're in our final 10 seconds now. Rest. All right, we're moving to a spider plank. So this one, we're gonna do it on our hands. You have the option to stay on your knees for this one. If you're there, knees wide here. If you're on your toes, we're gonna take the opposite hand, opposite foot to the corner. So as you're doing that, you're bracing hard, fighting that rotation. Try to keep everything square to the floor, butt down as best as you can. It's tough. And again, if you're on your knees, it would just look like this. We really wanna keep that pressure in the core so we're not collapsing into the arms. If you're feeling it a ton in your shoulders, like you cannot possibly go on, just take a break and get back into it. Rest, we're moving on. We're gonna do an elephant walk now. Weird name, exercise is pretty simple. We're coming onto those hands into a plank, feet wide. We're gonna just slowly walk the hands forward away from the body, slowly walk them back in. Do it again, walk them out as far as you can. You might be able to go further. You might not be able to go as far. I want you to go as far as you can to where you feel like you're in control. Just ease your way into it. This one is not about how many you can get. It's not about speed. It's about control. We wanna keep those hips down, square to the floor. And you can feel right here when your hands are away, how hard your core has to work to stabilize you. That's the goal here, core stability. Oh, we're done with that one. We've only got one left, an alligator crawl. So we're coming into a plank on the hands. We're going one arm, opposite leg to the knee. So as that hand moves away, knee comes to that outside elbow or your tricep. Hips and shoulders square to the floor. And again, on your knees, it would look like this. Less pressure for the shoulders this way. I know those shoulders are dying after all the planks. We're almost there. We're gonna try to move in unison here. So that foot, that leg, and that hand are moving at the same time. Those abs are having to work hard, even the obliques here. Upper, lower abs, we get it all.
done. You won't believe how out of breath you'll be after that five minutes of just abs, but it's full body. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to check out my other five minute workouts to tone and sculpt your abs. See you next time.